Let's talk about how to subset or extract parts of a tibble. One of the nice things about a tibble is that the syntax used to subset or extract elements from a data dot frame can be used identically for tibbles. Though I should note that even though the syntax is the same, the printed results might differ simply because the default printing options for a tibble are different than a data dot frame. We're going to examine the behavior of a tibble when you attempt to subset or extract its elements using the penguins dataset in the Palmer penguins package, which is actually a tibble and not simply a data dot frame. So I've taken this code that is shown here and I've already copied that into R Studio so that we can see the results of these commands. So now that I'm in R Studio, I'm going to load the tibble package and I'm going to load the penguins dataset just so that we're on the same page. And the first function I'm going to use is the is underscore tibble function, which simply asks or determines whether an object is in fact a tibble. And as I mentioned, penguins is a tibble object. And so is underscore tibble returns the value true. Similar to data dot frames, if we want to extract a specific column of a data frame or a tibble, we can use the dollar sign command, which we do here. And so this is going to actually pull out the vector species from penguins. Now I should briefly mention what I mean when I talk about extracting something from a tibble or from a data frame and subsetting a tibble or a data frame. So when I say extract, I'm talking about, for example, using this dollar sign syntax where we actually pull out a variable from the data frame and we're only looking at that specific variable. If we want to subset a data frame or a tibble, we want to access part of the tibble. And in the case of a tibble, it always returns a tibble. And that's what we're going to be doing in the subsequent notation or using the subsequent syntax. So the first example I'm going to give is subsetting the first column of the penguins tibble. So I'm going to use the square bracket notation where the, what we do is we have two square brackets. After the left square bracket, we have a position for rows here, which is empty, which means that we want all the rows, comma. And then after the comma, we have the columns that we want to access or subset from our tibble or data frame. And then we have our right square bracket. So in this particular case, I only want to subset the first column of penguins, which is done here. And you can see that because we're working with a, with a tibble and not a data frame, we actually get a tibble in return and not just a column of a data frame. If I wanted to subset more than one column, so for example, the first and third columns, I can combine those into a vector here after the comma inside the square brackets, and I will get the first and third columns of my tibble. If I wanted to get a single variable of my tibble, or I want to subset a single variable of my tibble, I can simply put the character string of the variable name in the column position of the square bracket notation or the square, bra square bracket syntax, and that will work. I probably actually don't need the C function here. I'm not sure why I have that. This will subset the island column of the penguins tibble and return a tibble with only that column. If I wanted to subset more than one column by name, then I can simply put the names of the variables I want to subset in the column position of the square bracket syntax. And so in this case, I'm going to get, going to get the island and bill underscore length underscore millimeter variables, and I'm going to subset those from the larger tibble. If I wanted to subset the first three columns of the penguins tibble, I can simply use one colon three inside the square bracket notation. And if I don't have a comma, it's going to assume I'm talking about the columns. So this does subset the first three columns of the tibble, or the penguins tibble. And just like with data dot frames, if I need to subset certain rows and columns, I can mix and match this notation. And so in this case, I'm going to subset the first three rows of penguins. And I'm only going to look at the, these two variables, these two columns of the penguins tibble. And I get this tibble right here in response. And I can also use the minus notation, uh, just like you would with a regular data dot frame. And so this is going to give us all rows, but the first three rows in the penguins tibble. And I'm only going to look at these two columns in my penguins tibble. So if you're familiar with the notation that you can use to access elements of a data dot frame or subset a data dot frame, the same notation, the same syntax is going to work for tibbles, though the printout is going to be a little bit different. And as long as you're doing a subset and not extracting a variable, you're always going to get a tibble.